Hi, welcome folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be 1135 Central Standard Time here coming to you from the great state of Texas. It is June 25th, 2021. And so uh, before we get started, hey, make sure you hit the like, subscribe and bell for notification uh, just because from time to time, YouTube will take you offline. So um, and if you want to get notices when I'm coming on, then uh, that's the way to do it. All right. So without further ado, let's bounce over to the board. I just want to show you guys got a lot of activity going on today. Now, I do have persistence up uh, because I was tracking a couple aircraft, but I've actually pulled them over. So I'll pull that off in just a second. Uh, but it's uh, well, right now it's showing 817. I know that's just an aggregate. So let me hit the uh, hit the P button off. And then uh, that'll give us a real number. So we're at about 365, 366 uh, currently up. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to be deep, uh, kind of doing deep dives into stuff related to Guantanamo Bay. But today I'm going to also take a look at this uh, McCaffrey guy because uh, there's some definite interesting things and data points going on uh about his uh you know suiciding himself and i think we have what what we i think what i've what i'm seeing is an another Epst epstein actually taking place sorry tongue tied there um but uh that said let's just look at a couple things so these two right here caught my eye and i want to show you guys these are are a little two ship of uh gulfstream fives in mexico and these guys are trailing each other. They've come from down in central Mexico. And so I'm going to pop those up in a minute into deeper uh, detail uh, so we can look at those. And then also yesterday, I kind of went shiny object on you. And sorry about that uh, for the Canadians that are watching. Now, there are two aircraft that were up here yesterday. This is going to be one of them. And uh, I'm not sure really what this thing is, but it's uh, other than it's I know it's a dash eight. Uh, but I can't tell if that's like a jump team or if that is uh, what we have going on here. But, uh, you know, is that a spy craft? I can't tell. That nose right there looks really funky, which makes me believe that maybe that is a, a some type of a spy bird. OK, and so that's what I caught my eye yesterday. We had two of these up flying around uh, just along right just north of the border up there. And so I wanted to point that out. I apologize yesterday because I left left you guys hanging. Uh, but that's what I was looking at. As you guys can see, that nose cone right there tells me that's different than that's not probably going to be a jump team. That probably holds some special type of a, um, a you know radar or reconnaissance uh, you know type of uh, aircraft so or capability. All right, let me back out of that now. But this is here, and there's actually two of those up here. That's near Winnipeg. Okay. All right. Now let's back this up. This is uh, what you guys are really going to be looking for, and I know that, so I'm going to get into it quickly. But this is going to be that C202 flight, and that's going to be your deputy director uh, for Department of Homeland Security, I believe, or, you know, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. That's DHS, but that's your deputy director. The, the director of Homeland Security flies one that's called C101. And so this is the secondary plane. But as you guys can see, it's actually a military. It's a Coast Guard bird. It's a beautiful Gulf Stream. Now, this is the one that's in question. So today, it landed 11 hours ago. It's in D.C. Notice it was down in El Paso, uh, right here down on the border. Uh, definitely going to be a black hat effort. But this is not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is if we go over here to uh, Madrid. Now, you guys are going to see this thing is actually over in Spain. Okay. And so here's Portugal here, but it was in Spain. Now, if you guys remember, the uh, McCaffrey guy was actually in prison, supposedly in Spain, and then he suicided himself. And so, uh, but this aircraft, we track it here in Spain. And then if I go down here to the flights, I go to the next level. Uh, that just took me to the airport. Sorry about that. Let me back up. And uh, we get to the next one then you can see this thing actually left spain and you can see it depart and headed across the drink of course it cuts off right here so it's no longer being tracked but we actually picked it up on over to reagan international and so uh, you can see it lands over here uh, in nantucket massachusetts and then on into uh, D washington dc so why is that important because i believe what we have is is an epstein issue now a lot of folks will say, well, why didn't, if we, if it's an Epstein deal, why wouldn't they not just take him down to Guantanamo Bay? 
Well, that's because this, folks, is black hat operation, not a white hat operation. I believe that the, the black versus the white, uh, I do believe that Guantanamo Bay is a white hat operation. And, you know, we've kind of pretty much set all of South Florida into, into Cuba is controlled by white hats into the Caribbean. Uh, that doesn't mean there's not some black hat stuff going on out there. But for the most part, I think that is all going to be white hats. All right. And so as we look at that, let's take a quick look at some of the stuff that uh, this gentleman put out before he was suicided. OK, this is how you know that there is something definitely up with what's going on. All right. So first of all, uh, this was a tweet that he posted. Now, this this took place back in June 9th, 2019. And he says uh, uh, he's collected files on corruption in governments for the first time. I'm naming names and specifics. I'll begin with the corrupt. Uh, and that's the C agency and uh, and two Bahamian officials uh, coming today. If I am arrested or disappear, 31 plus terabytes of incriminating data will be released to the press. So obviously he knew he was on radar. He was getting ready to go down. Uh, now, one thing I do want to point out about that. Did you notice it talks about the agent? It talks about this Bahamian officials. Now, when we start looking at flights again today, you will notice that we are still flying flights into the Bahamas. OK, uh, so I do believe we have an operation going on down there. Now, here's the other piece, too. This is from the same guy. So this is John McAfee. Uh, he's getting a little subtle message swacked. All right. So he says, uh, we're going to kill yourself. I got my tattoo today just in case if I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. All right. Got it on his right arm. So he knew what the, what was in the cards. Right. And he knew it was coming. Now, my guess is this. And here's the last one, too, from John. All right. Says um, is this was October 15, 2020. So late last year, he said, basically, I'm content here. I have friends. The food is good. All is well. Know that if I hang myself a la Epstein, it will be no fault of my own. OK. And so now you look at this flight. So let's kind of break it down. Why would why would the deputy of national or, or Department of Homeland Security or the assistant deputy right to the director, I guess it is. Um, why would he be in Portugal, Spain? Are they over there to confirm a body? Are they looking at, you know, I'm getting a positive ID that this guy is indeed uh, deceased or did they go over there? grab him and basically bring him back to the states and then basically say he you know erased he's been erased right so he's uh, suicided himself so now he's completely off radar there's no pressure from anyone everybody you know when somebody thinks you're dead you got they got all the time in the world because nobody's looking for you okay and so if uh you know my opinion is that they went over there and grabbed him and brought him back and now he's probably getting the shakedown of his life and I would imagine they're looking for those, you know, 30 terabytes of, of uh, content that he uh, supposedly has. And so uh, that's just my opinion. Again, uh, just based on some of the if you remember back at the, the Epstein piece, when he suicided himself, um, there was flights that went down to Guantanamo Bay right immediately around that same time. There was a big shakedown, a lot of flights going into the, uh, the black sites. And so um, he definitely, if he was already deceased now, which he probably is, um, I would imagine that they, you know, that took place after he was brought to Guantanamo Bay. But I imagine they got him down there and got every bit of information out of him that they could. Um, so that said, let's get back over here to flashbang schedule. But that right there, folks, is, in my opinion, you've got a black hat operation. They're pulling him in. They've come back to the U.S. with him. He's probably in a safe house somewhere and you won't see, in my opinion, you won't see him go down to the spa because the spa is operated by white hats and this is a black hat operation. OK. All right. Now over here to uh, flashbang schedule for today, uh, as you guys can see, he's meeting with a bunch of um, Middle Easterners um, at about 3.30 and then he leaves to Camp David. He's heading to the bunker at 5.10 this afternoon and uh, put his pants on about 9.50 this morning. OK. So let's get over to the TFRs while we're talking about that. Now, yesterday we went into a lot of detail relative to all of these air shows that were going on. Uh, all of these are these yellow boxes as we go through our air shows. They're really kind of strange, even this one in here as the weather pushes through. But this one right here is going to be a flashbang up at Camp David. That's going to be a VIP one. 
All right, that's the one we're really watching. This down off of Florida, that's space operations. And then one that I was getting pinged on yesterday, of course, all these little red ones in here for the most part are fires. And then somebody said, hey, we've got a new one up here in Alaska that is an electromagnetic, um, you know, I guess this is the uh, TFR. They don't want any airplanes in this general area. A lot of people were pointing to HARP for that. I don't think HARP is in that same spot. But uh, that said, this is not a new one. This has actually been here. It goes on and off from time to time. And so, or it gets renewed and refreshed. So that is not actually something new. We looked at that a, a, at least a month ago. Okay. All right. Let me back out of this and uh, get away from that part. Get over here to Guantanamo Bay because this is where we actually have more information. And um, one of the things I'm going to look at today, we're going to look at the seating arrangement coming out of Jacksonville for this United Airlines flight. OK, but before we get into that, if you look at the board and you just, again, look across all the aircraft that's coming in and out, we've got another out of sequence that came in this morning. It looks like it departed about 30 minutes late. It was originally slated for 5.55 a.m. Uh, departure uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, and it ended up coming out at about 6.23 a.m. And so it's uh, arrived at Guantanamo Bay at 8.08 a.m. And let me just see here before. Now, this is where it's kind of interesting. So it's going to come back today. So it actually, it's at 10.35 a.m. That may be our, uh, landed two hours, 12 minutes ago. All right, so it's already returned back, but look at the next leg on this thing. Lauderdale over to Nassau, Bahamas, okay? Again, I think there's somebody, that's probably somebody getting the shakedown. And this thing is just handling all the flight sequencing. And then of course it comes back this afternoon and it looks like it's, leaves at 1244. It's on ground at uh, one about 1.30 p.m. And then, this can't be right because this is actually got a oh no that is right so this so uh 24 p.m that's strange okay so that's not a.m uh something screwy here because you can't you land and then take back off at uh, 10 minutes before then evidently that's a bermuda triangle and there is a wormhole so uh i guess this is our manifest here our manifest show but uh, anyway, it's scheduled to depart and come back. I think that's wonky right there, to be honest with you. All right. It's only a 41-minute flight. But uh, remember, international uh, rules of engagement change a little bit. So you land on a tarmac. And, uh, you know, if you want to do rendition stuff uh, and get information out of somebody, that is the place to do it. Okay. All right. So now let's get over some of the birds. We're just going to look at some of the activity associated with Guantanamo Bay and some of these other aircraft. Uh, this is the one we're just watching now, 329MC. We go over here to 302AZ. And uh, same company, uh, same type of aircraft, just uh, got a little little pinstripe down the side. Looks like it's going from Fort Myers up to Philadelphia, PA today. And uh, that is, what is that leaving? It's scheduled, so it doesn't really have um, a hard time on it yet. All right, so that'll, that'll uh, post here shortly. So that's 320, sorry, 302AZ. And then 312FU, this could be your Maxwell bird. Now, if we look closely at this one, uh, it's en route, it's actually flying, it's arrived uh, uh, nine minutes ago, arriving in, sorry, arriving in nine minutes, my bad. It looks like it's coming out of Bahamas. Uh, same location as this other bird, imagine that. So just about to land and uh, at Lauderdale, so. Uh, anybody that's got eyes on that one, that would be interesting to see what exactly gets off of that. But then it looks like it's going from there uh, this afternoon around 1.30 p.m. It's headed over to Macon, Georgia, right? Okay, now over to 301AZ. This is another one, same company, uh, Ace Aviation. And again, uh, that's expected to depart in two hours and 23 minutes. It looks like it's coming out of Branson, Missouri to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Now, um, that to me, I think there's a federal prison there, and I'm kind of wondering if they're not uh, moving some some um, prisoners. Okay, this in the past, I know a lot when I was watching the Bureau of Prison Air, Airplanes or Aircraft, they were actually flying in and out of Oklahoma City quite frequently. All right, so okay, just another data point again. All right, so let me do this before we get cranking in. Oh, I wanna go back to Guantanamo Bay 
uh, because a shiny object on you as we were looking at these planes. Sorry, there's just so much data there. It's in, it's insane trying to uh, just keep tabs on it all. Uh, it's kind of exciting actually because we've got so much going on. I, I did not expect it to be to this level, to be honest with you. This is um, a lot more than, than what I was expecting. So, uh, so for arrivals today, we've got a Sun Country. That's going to be your Uber for the uh, Legal Eagles. Uh, we have this out-of-sequence bird that's popped in, and then we have this uh, that's going to be from Charleston. That's going to be a cargo plane, all right? Now, it looks like the Sun Country is there for a little while. I don't see it. Uh, there it is down here leaving at 1.50 p.m., so it's on the scheduled departures. All right, there's that, but let's do this. I'm gonna go back over here to the arrival board. I wanna point out this particular bird right here, UAL 2578, uh, that came in from Jacksonville, Florida, all right? And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go look at the seating configuration, and I wanna point out a couple things. Now, you're gonna notice it's very similar to the seating configuration that came in, same aircraft from DC uh, that came, came down. Now notice, and this is where I got confirmation from guys that handle these kind of flights. From a security detail, you get you get one guy that's behind everybody, right? So it looks like we got two dudes on one on the aisle, one on window at the very back end, and then you have uh, two guys side by side, skipper row, two guys side by side, and then all the way at the very front, two guys side by side. Now this is uh, the inbound flight. That's Jacksonville. Now, if you notice, the outbound flight coming back from Guantanamo Bay back to Jacksonville is same thing except for one less guy, all right? So somebody stayed, all right, which is a pretty good indicator that you probably have, um, I, you know, I would think a, that's probably a prisoner transport, okay? All right, so there's that. Now, let's get into black hat versus white hat and start looking at some of the other details, okay? <laughs> All right, that was my segue. And of course I brought you back to the same screen, which didn't really segue, did it? Okay, so let's get over to this. Now, there's a couple things going on that caught my eye. If you guys remember yesterday where we were watching, um, I called out there was a, um, a priority ans uh, air transport 007. Now this is the same, the same aircraft. This is 007, of course, now it's saying um, PAT-7. It changed a little bit when I jumped over. So it was on the big ADS, open ADS uh, B screen. Uh, but when I, I keyed it in over here, it dropped the zeros. Uh, same aircraft though. But now if we look at where it has gone. So we've got it. Uh, let's see. So we were looking at yesterday, Thursday. It came out. Uh, so this is all Thursday, yesterday. So it started out at uh, Fort Belvoir. Went to Fort Knox. Then from Fort Knox, it went down to, it was over in Chicago. And then Chicago, it went over to uh, Fort Belvoir again. And then today it went uh, Belvoir all the way down to Homestead, Florida. <clears throat> and now it's actually actually returning back. So don't know what it's doing, but that was one we were watching yesterday uh, when we had a sea of priority air transport aircraft up, okay? Now here's the other one. This is uh, PAT-323. Now, this landed five minutes ago, but I uh, just wanted to point that one out, that it ended up down here in the Bahamas, all right? And so now, it, uh, this is actually the return. So it was in the Bahamas a little while ago this morning, and now it's actually, it just landed back in uh, North Carolina. So we go from Bahamas down to, uh, back to Raleigh, and that's gonna be your, uh, another priority air transport. Uh, my guess is that this is probably part of the white hat side of the house, okay? Now, black hat side of the house as we get into that. Now, this is going to be your live flights for Swift Air, all right? Now, when I say white hat, black hat, what I'm talking about is good versus bad, okay? I believe that the white hats are in control when it comes to Guantanamo Bay and the activity that we see based on human trafficking. It's kind of a push-pull. So if you just kind of split it and you look at the effort that's going on with, with um, you know, the DOJ and people being arrested and, and people going down to Guantanamo Bay, we're tracking that. Like I said, it's a new airline. The airline that they're utilizing for charters is a very pro-Republican um, company. Uh, we've done extensive research on everybody from the owner all the way to the board of directors to employees that work for that company that are listed 
um, and they all have they're all very pro uh, conservative pro republican uh, folks okay now that said this is the flip side of it now this is actually going to be swift error and this is where we're seeing them come across the border and pick up people and bring them in uh, a lot of border activity bringing a lot of kids in from down in central america now yesterday i mentioned that there were uh they were putting them in different color t-shirts i've also there is an article out there you can look it up that uh, actually talks about wristband colors that they've also put wristbands on them of different colors so they can sort them and separate them the t-shirt one was an intel drop that i got from somebody that was actually working for the for the airline okay and so i'm not going to go beyond that because if i give you too much information that's not a big airline it would not be hard to find probably who the leak is and so i don't want to say anything um, but you can go in and find very similar information with respect to the um the arm you know the wristbands of different colors okay and that is across a lot of the, the media outlets, all right? Okay, so let's look. This is the current aircraft. Now, this one is coming into Brownsville. Again, Brownsville is the border operation. Uh, these, it normally will show, it's got the lines you can see coming in and out of where they're headed. But that one is also coming from a border headed across. Looks like it's headed into Greensboro. And so uh, departure from Brownsville. You know, we can get into some more of these. This is San Juan, Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Again, uh, Bullhead City, Arizona. These are Missouri. But let me go over to, you can see where these guys are headed. So this one's headed from San Diego down to El Paso. They'll grab more people, um, and then we'll see them boogie to uh, another location with deeper in the United States. But here's the swift one here. Landed 56 minutes ago. Took off out of Alexandra. Alexandria, Louisiana, when it went to uh, Guatemala City, Guatemala. Okay, now they're going to pick up another boat load of folks, uh, kids, and they're going to bring them back here into the U.S. So let me see if I've got anything on. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't show the next leg of the flight. Now, notice here on Wednesday, on the 16th, uh, this bad dude was in Brownsville, Texas, and went to Miami. So they're bringing them all over the place, all over the place. Okay. Uh, but right now, this one's down here. looks to be uh, picking up more people. Okay. Now, speaking of black hats, this is going to be your uh, uh, Coletta Airlines. Landed two days ago. Went from Mexico up to Laredo, Texas. Now, I did cover that one yesterday, but I just want to point it back out. This is a border town. and um, uh, Sorry, rolling up here to a border town. So this is Mexico to a border town. Sorry, my lines got a little wacky there, but you can see there's your uh, Texas border. All right, right on the border, okay? So they are definitely in the mix on this whole thing. And then here's another Southwest uh, flight and uh, landed 23 hours ago, Brownsville, Texas, headed down to uh, Nicaragua, all right? So now you've got one right now in Guata uh, Guatemala City, and then you have one here in Nicaragua, okay? And so these will, again, they'll pick up folks and off they go. So the question is, what are they doing here at the border that would bring them back this direction? And that's where I believe based on intel on the ground, we have a separation going on and that there are some folks that are getting rides back down here uh, where they're separating, you know, probably kids and whoever brought them up and giving them free rides back. And then of course they get more kids here and bring them, bring them back into the States. So, um, all right. And then the last one here is going to be 149 XA. Again, uh, this is the Alexandria down to Brownsville. Uh, that's a day ago. And so you can see them. This, this was uh, yesterday. All right. So this is another plane back down. Alexandria, uh, Louisiana seems to be pretty busy with them. Okay, let me just double check here real fast as we get into this is going to be XPL Honduras. And uh, we've been watching this one. This is our alternate prison location. Now, the reason I know that is because if you go back to the National Defense Act bill that was written uh, last year, it actually requested that they do a study uh, and threw a bunch of money at it for an alternate to Guantanamo Bay. And this was the location as well as Kwajalein Atoll. And this is the one I believe that stuck because we've seen an increased flow and in traffic coming in and out of and actually connecting to Guantanamo Bay from here, okay? 
Uh, it looks like right now we had two REACH aircraft come in from Charleston, and that was on Wednesday. And then just before that, we had this one, which was a kind of an interesting bird. Uh, I don't have any pictures of it. They seem to have taken it down. It did have a, an existing picture, uh, but this is a tail number FAH001, and that is actually a, um, it says ASL Airlines Hungary, which is a Hungarian-owned aircraft, but uh but that one came in earlier this week too and so we'll continue to watch xpl because i think we're going to have probably some increased activity just based on the uptick that's going on over at the spa okay all right now these are the two i was watching when we first got on i said hey these are two gulfstream g5s rolling out of uh mexico city and i was tracking them this is mexican military and those two were tight like like probably less than a quarter mile gap uh, flying one right behind the other. So it looks like they've got somebody here rolling out of Mexico City. And uh, I don't know where they're headed, but uh, let's see what this one's showing. Uh, you can see it's been kind of all over the place, but this was the latest. So it rolled out of here. We'll watch it. I don't know where it's headed to. Maybe right to the border, potentially. I mean, you can't go much further than that. So it looks to be, yeah, I mean, that's, your, that's a TFR, security TFR. So it's bringing... They're rolling right up here to the border itself, all right? And then that's one of them. And then this is another one, SMX01. And like I said, you can see they're one right behind the other. So uh, they're both rolling in tight. And uh, I don't know, it's again, I mean, you're right on the border. Those are Gulf Streams, so these are pretty nice, but those are consistent with the type of aircraft we see rolling into the spa, okay? And so it's just a, uh, it's a, it's a, Quick aircraft, you can get good altitude, good range, and uh, carry a small little detail on it. And so if we zoom in here, there they are right there. Those are the two rolling right in. Uh, you can see that one's already on ground. That's your S SMX we just looked at, that's a G5. And then there's your other one coming in right behind it. So these guys are, are very, very uh, minimal separation. Uh, no telling what they're up to, but it looks like they've got their own little little deals going. So, all right. So while we're here, let's kind of just bug in. We're going to go left to right. Uh, let me get out here over Hawaii and see if we've got any activity. It's been kind of quiet out here now. We do have a, it looks like a C-17 rolling across, across the drink. And we've got, uh, that's a French, that's a French bird. Looks to be headed out here kind of in that, uh, where was that kind of Indonesia type of, I can't tell what that says, but but that's okay. Just a French one, so it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so we we'll get over here to the to the west coast as we kind of break this down. And it looks like we've got some C one thirties rolling out of San Diego, like two of them. Uh, one taken off, one's already out there. Now this is a little CJ twenty seven. Looks like it's coming out up near Beale. A couple of uh, air refuelers that are up. That's another air refueler coming across and then we've got looks like we have a few heavies that are actually rolling uh, eastbound and then and let me see now yesterday we had all this activity this whole section from Phoenix all the way down south has been fairly busy the last couple of days now these are your little Intel birds that is actually a base operations for for intelligence down here right along the border and so that's what these aircraft belong to. Now, what they're doing, I don't know. I don't have any really good, good images of them, but I imagine those are doing probably gathering intel. Uh, you know, that's a Super King Air 350, probably a lot like the PC-12s. I would imagine they they have sand, you know, dirt box and Stingray capabilities, but they definitely fly in tight together, and they're doing a lot of it. I don't, I don't know. They they were doing that yesterday as well. So a couple EC-45s. There's another one of your Intel B350s. And uh, you can see the, some of the little loops are doing out here. Altitude wise, see yeah, it's at 10,000 foot range, right? They're hanging at 10,000 feet, which seems to be about optimal for the, um, the dirt box and Stingray equipment. So let's just double check. And that's uh, it's over by Mesa. That's gonna be related to the Boeing facility. So that's, here in uh, Mesa, Arizona, that's where they actually manufactured the, you know, these aircraft. And that's what, um, for those not familiar, that's an H-64, that's an Apache is what that is. So beautiful, air, uh, beautiful helo. I mean, 
lethal, very lethal. Good aircraft, but. All right, here's a couple of our heavies. Look like they're headed eastbound. That right there, uh, the Hammer 11, that's going to be your night watch. Looks like he's just now getting airborne out of Omaha, which is where uh, they usually roll out of. That's that's not anything new. A couple of air refuelers look like they are too. Uh, a lot of air refuelers actually headed up right now. That right there is going to be all just a little sea of trainers, what they call Tweety Birds. And same thing here. This is all trainer activity. Now, you do have two AWACS. Those are going to be your... Uh, sorry, that's not the AWACS I clicked on. That's going to be your AWACS. They look like they're just running a marshalling pattern in the general area, but those are what you would call air traffic control. There's going to be a, you know your standard... You that guy's running a little, little loop there, but those guys are... They've got that radar dome on the top of the aircraft, and they basically handle air traffic, okay? So that's what those two guys are doing. A couple real tight information uh, air refuelers right there. They're probably getting ready to do some hookups. And then same here with this. That looks to be a C-17 hooking up for an air refueling. And let me see what their 20,975. Let me see what the airspeed is on that. Oh, speed in a, so I don't have an airspeed on it. That guy's at 16,000. So it looks like he's rolling up tight behind this guy. So these two are either hooking up or already hooked up. All right, let me get over here to a little more East Coast side. This whole bag of cereal in here is just going to be, that's just, that's all trainers, <laughs> just to see a con congestion. So, um, You'll get a mix between the helos and the and the helicopters. This is just one big pilot training, uh, you know, soiree. So not anything to really see over here on that side. Now you do get every once in a while you'll get some C-130s like this one that's kind of mixed in there, hidden because they they come in and out of this location. But for the most part, that's just a bunch of trainers. Got a fighter and that right there is a Brazilian bird. Now that one that's on ground. So you guys know there's a, a Harris Corporation out of Melbourne. Actually, that's what that's tied to right there. So when you see that Brazil bird out there doing some testing, uh, they're more than likely working with Harris on a program and uh, they're out just doing some uh, system development stuff, okay? Uh, that's gonna be one of your fighters on ground, or actually not on ground, but he's 800 feet, 114 knots. So he's probably on final approach coming into uh, Patrick Air Force Base right there. And then let me back up just a tad. It looks like you've got a, some air refueling headed down over this general area. Makes you wonder if uh, if the T-Man isn't back down in Florida. I don't know. Uh, wider in some weather there. And just get back in. Now look at all the heavies that are right here just over the Charleston area. So it looks like these are probably, they look to be, let me see if they're descending at their level at 21,000. And 23,000 actually just went out here and came back. So I don't know. That one right there is landing, it looks like. And so my screen just went black. Let's see if it comes back. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I was like, going to be a quick show. Don't know why it does that. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. All right. Let's see if we can get this bad dude reloaded here. We'll get eyes on over the uh, the brown zone. And then uh, we're going to take another look. I've got a couple, couple more of the uh, the balloons that are up. We'll take a closer look at those guys. And uh, while this thing, I'm going to just do a refresh on the screen here, and we're going to hop over to flight um, flight radar 24. Now this one is 55,000 feet. He is currently up, and he looks to be in the New Mexico area. So we've got. Uh, uh, evidently there's a Cuba, New Mexico, but this is where his current location is. And so again, these are, excuse me, 100% spy, spy balloons. All right. Now, again, uh, somebody had asked me yesterday to give a little clarification on this. So Google started out making Google balloons with the intent that they were going to uh, provide internet access to remote locations all around the world. And in January, 2021, that whole operation pretty much went you know, fizzled out. And then the company that's making these balloons now is called Raven Aerospace. They're out of uh, Sioux Falls, um, uh, North Dakota, or is that South Dakota? Uh, but they're out of Sioux Falls. 
And um, those are why we see them launch. So we can track these back. You'll see them actually pop up out of Sioux Falls and then, um, and then they'll go from there. But these bad dudes are all over the United States. You just don't see them unless they really want to be seen. So this one right now, we just happen to get lucky and we could catch eyes on it. All right, let me back up and look at the other one. But typically, I mean, we've had them, um, for example, if you guys remember uh, just a couple weeks ago, we were looking at the ones that were out over Hawaii and then they decided they were going to roll out. They came over to the East Coast and they disappeared. Or sorry, West Coast. And they disappeared. So here's the other one right here. And uh, you can see there's Sioux Falls right there, South Dakota. Sorry. And um, and then, of course, um, now it looks like it's headed eastbound. So here's Des Moines, Iowa here. And then it's uh, it's still headed east. But that one is at 54,500. That's that's well above most of the commercial traffic that's out there. You may get some other military birds like a U2 or something like that that gets up at that altitude and higher. But uh, but these, not really a threat to commercial aviation, except for when it's either going up or coming down. Okay. But that said, these bad dudes are, they're all over the United States. We just don't see them. Okay. And so, uh, again, when we had all this stuff going on out here, we're like, why are they off the coast of Hawaii? It's because... Hawaii actually had a Brand X uh, spy boat, you know, the Soviet Union spy boat uh, that was out here, um, you know, hanging in the area. And then, of course, they had a big, you know, 300 miles out. They had a big uh, military exercise by the Russians, which was kind of interesting that that took place. But um, but now we know why they were there. And, of course, they went out here. Last time we saw them, they were up kind of in this general area along the uh, western seaboard between California and Portland. So they're still up there. They didn't They didn't drop. They can stay up. From my research, they stay up about a year. So when you see them go up, the chances are they're not bringing them back down. And again, we had seven of them that were sitting over North Carolina when the big bust happened. And then that's what really kind of got our eyes on that. And then uh, the drive actually put out a big article about it a couple of days after we had we'd pointed them out. Uh, going into detail of what those balloons actually are capable of and what they're actually been re they've been repurposed by our military as reconnaissance stuff. And so, um, so if you don't follow the drive, go check those guys out because the drive comes out with some pretty awesome uh, articles. Like that's how I found the sniffer uh, helo and and a lot of other things. So uh, all these spy craft that are up, uh, they've got somebody that does some some pretty solid aviation write ups about aircraft and some of the technologies that are out there so um anyway there's that let me get back over to adsb and let me do a cleanup because i know right now this is going to be just one big uh pink screen and so let's see if hopefully it's got it's reloaded so we can look get a closer look at dc and the brown zone uh aka the senior living center so it looks like we got a two ship of c-130s rolling in there now that one right there is going to be that's a spy bird so you guys know that's one we watch on a pretty regular basis. That's the R50348. Uh, it comes out of DC and you can see, this gives you a little different flavor of it. Normally we look at it from a different application, a flight app, but these shoestring looking things where they're doing these loops and they're flying up and they're doing more loops, um, that is, they're, they're grabbing Intel. And so that is a, a Dash 8, but it's an RO6A and that is a, a variant of the Dash 8 that is straight up Spybird, okay? They're, they do have a Dirt Box, Stingray, and a Kutramon of other stuff. And so uh, when they're out there flying these routes, they are, they're definitely gathering intel. So I don't know what they're, who they're watching, but I'm just telling you they're watching, okay? Looks like we got a little uh, two ship. Those are more than likely H60s. Look to be coming out of North Carolina. And uh, yeah, they're just, Rolling in one behind the other there. A couple C-17s and then up here, that's going to be an H-53 outside of New York. That's going to be one of your, um, uh, that's either going to be a C-Stallion or um, I think that's, let me just double check. Yeah, it looks like it's headed right up the, uh, right up the waterway there. And the fighter, let's see, another H-60. Don't know what that one is, but let's get over real fast. Uh, a lot of a lot of actually helo activity in this general area today. So let's go up here. We've got a little P3 action. That's going to be a Canadian. It looks to be hanging out over Nova Scotia. 
Uh, we've got a navy bird coming in from the, across the drink. It's going to be a, one of your white tails, and then a C-17. Looks like that one's also inbound from over across the drink. So let's get over there. Speaking across the drink, what we have here another navy bird. All right. Uh, now, uh, let's do this real fast. Uh, now you remember this uh, another navy bird again, same same white tail. Okay, coming out of that area. Now this is uh, Portugal, Spain is where uh, McAfee uh, supposedly suicided himself. But I will point out we got a drone that's currently up over that over that area, doing some uh, some surveillance. Now 65 knots, so that thing's just slow rolling. It's at about uh, almost just under 6,000 feet. Looks like it's on the descent right now, but you can see. Now that's not one of your big giant uh, drones. That's going to be one of your little smaller. One of your little smaller ones, but uh, at 60, 61 mile an hour, that's almost just hovering in the air, really not not moving very quickly. So, uh, yeah, running a little search pattern right there, and then doing some stuff. Uh, but those little drones are they're pretty powerful. They get a lot of intelligence, and so I do find it interesting that uh, they happen to be over this general area after a day after somebody uh, supposedly suicide themselves. And like I said, the C two O two. Um, assistant director uh, flying over there to either witness I mean that that was kind of a very interesting flight to have him pop in onto that because it you typically wouldn't see that unless somebody was like I'm going to get eyes on this guy or we're gonna go grab him we're gonna bring him back and we're gonna do the shakedown here in the US and, and uh, quit playing games because he's got a lot of information on us and so anytime you got the agencies involved there's there ain't no telling okay all right, but again, like I said, that definitely is a black hat operation. He's he's not. If he was white hat and they did that, um, they would have probably pulled him down. We would have seen some flights that probably went into uh, the spa, and uh, that's where the shakedowns would have happened. But uh, the fact that we didn't see anything go in the spa that just confirms uh, that it's probably black hat. So very very quiet over the UK right now. I don't see a lot of anything really. Uh, let me turn off this persistence. I probably don't see a lot of. I got two birds up, which is very unusual, uh, but it is Friday evening over there, and so we're plus six. So you're looking at about 6.15 in the evening over here in uh, London, and not too much going on for a Friday. Uh, looks like we got some NATO AWACS that's off of uh, the boot here out of uh, Italy, and then that right there is going to be one of your little Darniers. Now that, my friends, is a uh, U.S. Air Force Special Operations bird. And so when we were talking about Dagger the other day, these guys are going to be probably tied in with some of the Dagger efforts, okay? So you guys know um, we'll see a lot of those guys actually roll out of the Crestview area in Florida, and you'll see for a while there, these were the Magma birds that we were tracking, uh, but that's spec, that's spec Ops, okay? All right, so um, I will back off of them just because I don't know what they're up to, and I don't want to dox them, and uh, of course my screen locks up yeah all right so uh we'll get our screen back here in a minute as soon as it unfreezes there you go thank you very much uh looks like a little fighter action out here so this is the black sea this is where we had the stuff going down with the uk and the and the uh the soviets the other day and uh that right there let me see what we're looking at that's kind of an interesting that has the all the the patterns and call signs of a drone so that's that is going to be a drone right there uh, it's 56,000 foot up, and you can see they are definitely all the way up here into the Ukraine. And uh, that pattern is not consistent with what it's really doing. Uh, it's very jagged because the signal is hard to, uh, hard to get a clean signal on it, okay? Uh, but let me just point out something. That drone is coming out of Tel Aviv. That's an Israeli drone. <laughs> so, uh, although I say that, it says United States on here, so... Uh, it's a U.S. drone that was launched out of Israel. Go figure that one out. And it went up into uh, Ukraine. So I guess we got a little operation going on here as well. All right. All right. Over a little further into the Middle East, see if we've got anything. I'm not seeing really much over UAE or Oman and into Kuwait. So, uh, all right. So listen, that is going to wrap us up for today. Again, the, C uh, the C-202 flight 
I think is very interesting in the fact that uh, that is, like I said, that's not going to be your director. That's your deputy director. And it uh, looks like he was sent on a mission over here to Spain to either uh, pick somebody up or um, that's, like I said, that's confirmation they were there. And, you know, so he's either, like I said, either picking somebody up or taking somebody back or doing confirmation on somebody you know, getting eyes on a body, but uh, normally if it was a, a takedown, they would probably have somebody just take a picture, you know, and it would go into the agency stuff and they do a DNA swab and off it goes. So uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to be flying over there to do that unless they were actually going over and picking him up and bringing him back. And then he just AKA disappeared by suiciding himself. Okay. And so uh, we will probably never know and uh, this guy will probably, uh, once he gets the shakedown, disappear completely. Like, I mean, he's already disappeared, but I mean, like, officially disappear. All right. All right, folks, listen, that's going to be our sit rep for this week. And uh, we will be back on on Tuesday for our regular uh, sit rep. And then uh, over the weekend, I've got the Watchman Hour that I'll be doing. It'll be posting up uh, for those on Patreon. You guys can see that live. And uh, that'll actually be going about 7 p.m. on on um, on Sunday night. OK, and for this week, we're actually covering uh, Sword of the Spirit, which is going to be pretty interesting. All right. That's it. God bless. Monkey out. Works, you